So it says an observer standing by the railroad tracks observes two bolts of lightning strike the ends of a 300 meter long train simultaneously at the instant the middle of the train passes him at that speed, uh, 50 meters per second. Okay, um, I think the most uh, useful way to do this is uh, with a space-time diagram. Now, I'm going to be drawing a very exaggerated space-time diagram because as you can hear from the description, um, this is a non-relativistic situation. But I'm going to pretend that this is a potentially relativistic situation and illustrate it this way. So, um, so this is the world line of the middle of the train that's going to be passing by this point at time equals zero. So I have a similar word lines at uh, the, this would be the back of the train and similar word line at the front of the train. So at time equals zero, uh, my front of the train is at um, time zero, uh, position 150 meters. And my back of the train is at time zero minus 150 meters. All this is in the, the inertial reference frame of the observer standing by the railroad tracks. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. And the light, lightning uh, strikes here at time equals zero. Um, and, and at time equals zero, uh, and t prime equals zero. So this uh, defines the, the origin for the both the set of coordinate axes. Uh, let the middle of the train which defines it at the, uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so the, the coordinate axis for the train will look like this. This uh, will become my CT prime axis and my X prime axis, which also defines the line of simultaneity, will be at this angle X prime. So the lightning at the front, it'll be happening after, or sorry, before time equals zero and lightning at the back will be happening at after time equals zero at uh, t prime uh, coordinate. So, so, and that's what the question is getting at. Um, as observed by an observer in the middle of the train, when does the lightning bolt strike the front of the train? And um, so I, even though I drew all this picture, um, to answer that really all you need is the, um, you just need the Lorentz transformation. So let me write down the Lorentz tr transformation. I have that memorized, I think. So uh, uh, I'll just write down the transformation equation for the time coordinate and the x coordinate. Y and g do nothing, nothing interesting. So for time coordinate, ct prime is equal to gamma ct minus beta x. And the time coordinate x prime is equal to gamma x minus beta ct. I have this memorized um, in that symmetric form. Um, now, because in this question the numbers are given in a very non relativistic way, um, let me rewrite these equations a little bit to um, make it easier for me to plug in the numbers. So I, in the first equation, I'm going to divide out the C so that it'll be T prime is equal to gamma times T minus, and then divide by C, and I'm going to write down beta is equal to V over C. So it'll be V times X divided by C squared. In my second equation, um, I'll just plug in beta is equal to V over C. So it'll be uh, gamma times uh, X minus uh, beta C is a V times T. Okay, so where it asks about the front of the train and the back of the train, really 
all we need to do is we need to plug in the numbers into this formula here. So we are told t is equal to zero. So good. Um, and the only part that we have to deal with are gamma, v, and x, and c. So, so let me do that. I think I can do this most easily in Sage Math. Um, how do I want to do this? Um, let's see. I think let me define a variable gamma. So for t prime, I have this expression uh, gamma times zero, and plugging in that zero there minus now. Uh, v will be fine. Um, uh, let me do it this way. I also need x. Okay. Uh, gamma times 0 minus v times x divided by c squared. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute in expressions. So for gamma, it will be 1 over square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. I think I, I want to do that before anything else. So after that, I'm going to further substitute in um, v is equal to 50 meters per second. Um, C, it, well, let me go, I think 2.998 is closer. But you know, let me not make it complicated. I'll just say 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. Um, and I think I need an x. My x for the front of the train will be uh, 150 meters. So, okay, I think that's all the numbers. Let's see what we get. Yeah, so we do get this minus sign. And that does correspond with that. Now, um, we have 8.3 times 10 to the minus 14. So in terms of uh, power of, so let me just take this, divide by one, uh, 10 to the power of minus 13. Then whatever is remaining is, yeah, minus 0 0.833. Minus 0 0.833. And I, I think I know what the answer here is. It's 0 0.833. But let's just double check that that is indeed the case. When I um, plug in the numbers here, it's basically the uh, same except for change of one number. Instead of x is equals 150, x is now equal to minus 150. I think the, everything else remains the same. Yeah, that's, uh, and you know, if I divide this by 10 to the minus 13, then that. Okay, so yeah, lightning extracts the front before the back. And uh, if the lightning bolt strike simultaneously order on the train, ah, so that's a different picture here. We are describing where the lightning, so simultaneously for the train observer would be these two points, for example. Um, so which event occurs first in the reference frame of the observer by the railroad tracks. So looking at this makes it kind of each to tell which one is first. You know, this is the one that happens before the um, the, the other event happens uh, from the, um, the the reference frame of the the observer who's following this line. So lightning bolt strike the back of the train first. Yeah, that should be correct. Let me submit it and see. Yeah, um, and yeah, and as the um, remark here says, yeah, there are really small values, you know, 10 to minus 13 second. I guess they can be measured. Um, that's uh, like, uh, let's see, a tenth of a um, tenth of a picosecond. And I think that kind of time scale can be measured. There are pulse delayers with the ADO second pulses. Picosecond is actually fairly achievable with the pulse delayers. And, you know, yeah, it's a uh, the kind of thing that uh, it's still very small. It, it takes a lot. It'll take a lot of effort to measure that kind of time difference. So yeah, the effects are real and become more significant. Yeah.